Hey, what's up guys? My name is Grady. I'm with Simply Embedded and today I'm going to talk about pulse width modulation and I'm going to show you how to do that in Verilog HDL. So without further ado, let's get started. Pulse width modulation or also known as PWM is a known technique to achieve analog results using digital means. This means that some sort of digital logic is used to create a square wave and the square waves can be in a different length, meaning they can have a different kind of duty cycle. Duty cycle is the time period of how long the pulse is staying high. For example, if the pulse period is 100 seconds, which is awfully long time, but bear with me for this example, and let's say the duty cycle would be 20%, then 20 seconds the pulse will be high and 80 seconds the pulse will be low. That would stand for 20% duty cycle. And the same goes for 40% duty cycle, 60% duty cycle, and so on. Whatever the duty cycle might be, 40%, 60%, that percentage of time to pulse will be high, otherwise it will be low. So, but how can we create this pulse? Well, the answer is actually pretty straightforward when it comes to digital logic. We will need a counter, a clock signal and some sort of output. And of course, we will need a comparator. So we need to compare a bunch of values and determine what kind of a pulse length we want. So based on that comparator, we can output a signal when we want it to be high and when, when do we want it to be low. So without further ado, let's start with the code. All right, let's get started by creating a new project. You can name it whatever you want. I named it PWM. So create the top module and make sure you have some inputs and outputs for it. We're gonna have one input and one output for this project. So create your top module with input clock and output LED. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple counter that's triggered on the positive edge of the clock. Uh, let's make this counter 16 bits. No, let's take that back. Let's make it eight bits wide and initially that's here. We want to create a counter that counts up to 100. We can do this by saying that if counter is less than 100, keep counting. Otherwise, make sure that the counter value is equal to zero. By doing this, it's a little bit easier for me to talk about the duty cycles of the outputs. So in this case, we will create a duty cycle of 20% for this LED, which means that whenever the counter value is less than 20, the output will be one, otherwise it will be zero. The LED is turned on until the counter value hits 20. After that, the LED is zero until the counter resets again and is less than 20 again. And that cycle repeats over and over again at a very fast pace, which means that for our eyes, we will see a constant LED light on. Even though actually it's blinking really fast, it makes it look like the LED is turned on, but it's not very bright. So create a test bench now and let's test our code out. As usual, I'll copy your inputs outputs from the original file, set up the test bench and uh, run the simulation. Make sure you drag in important signals such as the counter value so we can actually see what's happening. You can run the simulation for, to be honest, I'm not sure. Let's run it for 10 microseconds, for example. So when we zoom out, we can see that the pulses are very short. The LEDs turn on for 20% of the time. So now if we change the counter value to a decimal, we can see that at 20, the LED turns zero. And at 100, the LED will, uh, the counter value will reset and the LED will turn on again. So let's modify our code and let's make so that we will have four outputs. Let's change the LED to a bus of four and uh, copy paste the first initial code. And we can just modify it out so that we have LED one, two, and three. And we will do four different duty cycles. So we can see the difference of the LED brightness using the pulse width modulation. So we can do 20, 40, 60, and 80% duty cycles. So make sure you change all the values and uh, have the correct values for the comparators of the counters. Modify the test bench and relaunch the simulation. Run it for another 10 microseconds and uh, let's see what's going to happen with each LED. 
So now we can see that for every single LED, we have a different pulse length. So that means that the longer the pulse length is, the brighter the LED is. Based on this, go ahead and modify your XDC file. After we've done that, generate the bitstream and let's check out the code. So we can see on our board that LED zero is the dimmest, LED one is after that, LED two and so on. LED three is the brightest because it has the longest duty cycle. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I truly appreciate it. If you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring the bell to get notifications for future video uploads. Other than that, keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.